call from Nick. Nick. What's up? Nick, have we talked before? Uh, no. Do you think we'll ever talk again? No, probably not. All right, so we should probably make the most of this one, right? Yeah, make the most of it, dude. All right. I mean, um, what do you what do you think? All right, so you and I are probably never. I, I you know I don't think we're going to talk for longer than five minutes. So we don't have that much time, and we know that we're never going to speak to each other ever again after this. Um, but yet. Uh, you know, you and I both kind of understand that there are lots of people in this world. So, you know, um, well, I would say that uh, scarcity leads to value. And knowing that there's so many people, it's like, does that make either of us really that valuable to each other as people? Knowing that, um, you know, if we ever want to have a conversation with another person ever again, there's lots of other people to have conversations with. You're asking me if this is a special conversation to me. I guess so. And I understand if it's not because, you know, I'm just a guy and you're just a guy. And if you want to talk to someone else who's just a guy, you can do that. And, you know, um, I, I don't know. Do you think this is special? I guess uh, to get in, sure. Uh, only one person can get in at a time. So that's no, sure. forget, forget about the context of it. This is a stream and blah blah blah. You know, I mean, just you know, we're two people talking on the phone. Does that do? Does this fact that we're talking right now? Do you think that that is special? Well, it's only going to happen this one time. So yeah, I guess by definition, that's that's something different. You can call it special, right? Well, like right. I guess, but like you go, you know, you go to Subway, right? And you tell the person working at the Subway. Hey, how you doing? And they say good, and and they you know toast your sandwich, and you go, man, the it's raining down hard outside, and they go, yep, sure is, and then you give them money, and they give you a sandwich, and then you leave, and then you probably never see them again. Was that a special interaction? It was unique. It was. It was. In he- by definition, it was unique. Yes, because that is the only interaction you had with that particular person. Yeah, I agree with that. So, okay. So, all right. So, we've determined. And how long have we been on the phone? Okay. So, this was not a special conversation, but it was unique. Yeah, definitely unique. And you, we've also determined that uniqueness does not necessarily equate to specialty or value. Yeah, that's purely subjective. Beautiful. Well, um, I'm so glad I could figure that out with you. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, you have a good rest of the night, Nick. You too. See you guys. Alyssa. Alyssa. Hello. Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa. Oh my God, I did it. <sighs> you did. You did. I, I don't know it. if you did it because I don't really know what you're referring to by it. If by it you're referring to you made it on to the to the to the call-in show, that is true. Do you? What are your goals in life? What do you want to do? What is the real it? Because like, look, you know, this <laughs> was just sort of a random thing here. I assume, I hope that you have larger goals in your life than to make it into my call-in show. I would love to hear what those are. Yeah, the it I was referring to in this moment was totally making sure. it on the show. It was uh, sure, sure. I only just made a Twitch, <laughs> so like I got the notification. I'm like, yeah, I never Beautiful. actually seen you live, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I did it. Mm-hmm. But my bigger goals mm-hmm. right now is just getting a car and getting my own place. That's pretty much the get, big goal. Getting the car, getting your own place. Um, Those are the big goals. <laughs> what's stopping you from? Uh, from from this, do you have a uh, some sort of employment that you are, are currently in the process of doing? Oh, um, I just got a new job actually. Nice. It's been uh, I had a I had a baby last year during the whole pandemic. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. But uh, me and uh, me and Daddy didn't work out, you know. 
So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's that's where I'm at now. I'm just trying to get out. And I've got a question. And by the way, look, we've met each other for two seconds, and so you don't owe me any information about your life that you're not comfortable telling me. But um, you know, is are are are, are 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 you planning on on raising the kid alone? Is the dad gonna be in the picture? He wants to be, so like I'm gonna let him do that as long as he wants to be. But like, I've I've decided I'm. It's got to be once I'm out of the house, it'll be because we're just co living right now. Sure, sure. Which is uh, it's something I'm sure you can imagine. I don't gotta. You can read blanks, <laughs> but sure. sure. But uh, yeah. Hopefully, I if if that's what he, if that's what he wants, he says that's what he wants. So I'll allow that. But if if he chooses not to, I'm not gonna stop him. I find it so interesting. I find it impressive, honestly, how indifferent you are to him being a part of the picture. Because, I mean, on, just on a personal level, like if I had a kid, I, I would be, you know. Um, feeling like I would need all the help I can get. I'm I'm impressed by this this level of confidence that you're displaying. I'm trying. I'm try- I'm trying. I mean, the first couple this is this is all fresh like a month a month or two and uh mm. I've had I've had support from my friends. Uh Cool. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm outside of my porch. Uh, but, um, uh Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh, no worries. I've reached, out to, I've reached out to friends and family, and they've been helping out little by little. Um, mm-hmm. I was doing, like, the single ma thing before all this, so he was working. But now that he's not, I had to go out, get a, get a job, which I found right away. It, it, awesome. With everything going on, everybody's hiring. So now it's just making those financial moves and getting – it's going to be a long process, and I'm trying to just take it day by day. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. – fighting and bickering and trying to get like that's not gonna that ain't gonna solve nothing mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you sound and like I'm a just, really good mindset about all this I'm trying to stay positive I really am <laughs> it comes oh, and goes impressed. oh thank you thank um, you uh, uh, have you always wanted to have a kid yeah I always wanted um, I wanted to have I always wanted to have a son and I got him and he's he's one years old now and I'm so sorry. No, don't be sorry. I live in a city full of bikes. I'm trying to determine if that is a truck or some sort of inner city swamp monster. <laughs> it's definitely an inner city swamp monster. You know, I, you know what? I'm also proud of you for, you know, because uh, if I lived in an area with inner city swamp monsters, I would think to myself, should I bring a child into this world? And I appreciate the fact that you are willing to do so in spite of the fact that you live in an area with inner city swamp monsters. Well, you got to keep you got to keep a look at you got to have a dog. You got to have mm-hmm. all the things you need to keep all the swamp monsters at bay. So as long as you got all that mm-hmm. set, you can just do anything. Mm-hmm. You can do anything mm-hmm. as long as you put your mind to it. That's what I'm trying to keep. I agree with that. Tell me, but really quick, what what are you most excited about uh, for having this child? Watching, uh, I'm not sure. It's something I've always wanted, like since I was little, little. Like I wanted to grow up and have a family, mm-hmm. and it's been kind of kind of hard knowing that like I'm not going to have that perfect family like most you know statistics I'm sure you've seen them all too well, but, well okay well oh, I, I, I want to I actually kind of want to talk about that for just a second here because this idea and I'm not trying to you know whatever but this idea of like a perfect family is oh it really screwed up my mental subjective. as a small child yes really that's what I've that's what I've been like recently trying to like accept and trying to keep in my positive mindset you know kids you watch a lot of shows and you watch a lot of movies and i really you always know there's those you know there are kids living with their grandparents one mom one dad two moms two dads you know whatever the situation may be but like as long as the house is full of love and that's what my breakup was about we had been going downhill a while 
and it was more he had to pull the bullet he had to pull the trigger but like um it was mutually accepted mm-hmm. and it's kind of hard to sometimes to accept that i was kind of like I was, I was real wallowy for one for a week but then mm-hmm. i kind of had to like you know kind of like shake it off and be like you know there's this is more than me now and mm-hmm. i guess it's kind of having something that's more than me that's what i look forward to mm. I like that. I I, I just want to say I, a couple things. First of all, I fully agree with you. That was what I was thinking too. Is that you know a perfect family? You know, is just one with a lot of love in it. Exactly. And again, again. Uh, I I pre- I'm so impressed. I'll say it again by the confidence that you're displaying in like you know I don't you know it's great that he wants to be in the picture, but I don't need him. You know. You can handle these things, these things on your own. So you know, uh, uh, I'm 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 impressed by all of this, and I hope that you you don't succumb to any pressures of wanting a perfect family, because that that to me is not something that even exists. No, I agree. At this point, at this point, I've come to realize my perfect family is me, that little boy, my derpy faced pug of a dog. <laughs> my cat and the snake and that's that's those are the only things that i need to worry about beautiful thank you so much for sharing Alyssa. i wish you best of luck and have a good rest of the night you too um thank you again for having me guys of course take care Alyssa. you too have a good night bye call from Rennie. Rennie. Oh my god, I got in. Holy shit. Hi, Gag. How are you doing? Hello, Rennie. How are you? I'm doing awesome. How are you, man? Um, do you know I'm doing good? I, it took me a little bit to get back into the rhythm of being on the internet talking uh, to people. You know, like when you've been out of the 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 zone for a little bit you kind of have to ease back into it but i i feel like i'm in a better place now to uh uh, uh you know converse with you um rennie like That's ren good. and stimpy i'm sorry so how are you doing ren oh man tell me I'm, everything i'm doing great um i've been wanting to get on your show for a while because i've been really happy about something honestly um you know, I came out as bi not too long ago, and I found out, like, I have these feelings, and, um, sorry, I'm, like, nervous talking about it, because it's awesome no, that I got you're... on your show, because I want to I wanna show this law to my kind of girlfriend, but, yeah, it's like, we've been friends for so long, and I've been through so much, and she's always been there for me, and kind of had feelings for her, <laughs> and found mm-hmm. out she has feelings for me and oh man it's been it's been great it's been awesome and it's been a long time so this this is good <laughs> so tell me all right so you, you sound like you're very happy i'm curious like what aspects in, are there aspects in particular that you're happy about this are you are you happy that you feel more free to be yourself happy mainly that you're about to try to embark it sounds like on a new relationship with a person yeah, yeah. And the thing is, um, honestly, when um, when I was in my previous relationships, it was um, it was just toxic. Um, I've I always had these feelings like I've always liked the same sex as well, but I never showed it because you know the way I grew up was like it's you know you should like boys. That's that's pretty much it. But. Um, I was in that relationship and I found out it was so toxic. Like I couldn't cut my hair because he hated it that I looked like a boy. Mm -hmm. And it just really, really, really hurt my self-esteem. And it really, really messed me up for a long time. And, you know, meeting this person, she's so great. She always encourages me to just be myself. Um, I wanted to cut my hair short for the longest time. And, you know, I finally took the plunge and I did it. And my God, I feel amazing. I just, I, I feel so much more comfortable in my own body. It's, it's just great. And I just wanted to share that with you. And I guess everybody else on the internet. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Rennie. I, I always say it, it, it can be difficult 
to uh, be yourself in many situations. And even if it causes you some sort of short-term pain, maybe with, you know, your parents or I, I don't know who the people or things are in your life that were causing friction. But even if it causes short-term pain in, in those relationships, I'm proud of you for doing it because it, it always pays off in the end. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Absolutely. And I mean, it's been so long, man. I'm, I'm about to turn 30 in this October. So it's like, I, I've really? been keeping this. Yeah, I've been keeping this in for so long. And it just feels great just to finally let it all out and be me, you know. So just wanted to share that to everybody. And I hope everybody listening, just be yourself. That's all you can ask for, man. Can I ask you something? And you don't have to, again, you know, this seems like, you know, you don't have to tell me anything that you don't want to tell me or talk about anything you don't want to talk about. But I I am curious, is there a reason why you decided to to wait so long? Um, Well, I, I was, when I was in that toxic relationship, I was with him for almost 11 years, actually. Um, and it was more like, you know, I, I it was kind of mal- manipulative and it was like, you know, you can't find anybody better. You know, you, this is the best you can do. You're always wrong. I'm right. And it just, it really, really, really fucked me up for a long time. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, um, I started therapy about a year and a half ago. Um, you know, just talking about all that and it's just, it, it just feels like such a weight off my shoulders to actually be able to be myself. And awesome. yeah, it's been, it's been a journey, man. <laughs> it's been a journey, but I'm really happy. I just I finally feel comfortable with me. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Ren. I hope that, uh, I hope that other people hear this and get inspired. Absolutely, absolutely, guys. Thank you so much, man. I love you. Thank you. You're amazing. Of course, you have a good rest of the night, Renny. Thank you so much. You Bye. Call from Matt. Matt. Hello. Hi. How are you, sir? I'm good. You know, I, I, you know what's funny is that um. The 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 more the the more se- I feel like there's been a good amount of serious calls. I think we've only taken three, but there've been a good amount of serious ones. And sometimes the serious calls make me nervous sometimes. But all the ones we've gotten so far have been have been like within the realm of like you know I'm comfortable talking about uh, these issues. So I feel I feel good about that. Nice. That is good to hear. But who are you? Tell me everything. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm going to need more specifics on that one. I have, what, I have no further you? specifics to offer you, unfortunately. What about me? Yes. I, what about you? Human being, as well as... Uh, dude, I have no fucking idea. I'm trying to, trying to not be, you know, stick in the mud, but also, you know, come to see what this was about. Look, I don't mind. I, here's the thing: is you, I, I only want the truth from you. I don't want you to try to be anything. Well, main reason for calling is hit know, me. Depression exists, and uh, this seemed like something that would kind of take my mind off it and be enjoyable. And uh, you know, so far it is, and it's done like ten seconds. <laughs> I cannot. Here, that's the thing: is I. That's what I was gonna tell you: is I cannot cure your depression or even talk through. Your no, depression right. with you in a way that I would feel uh, uh, qualified to do. But I, I mean, yeah. I can help you with your depression in the same way that a game of Tetris can. That where you awesome. play it for 10 minutes and you're engrossed in the game enough to uh, not think about anything else going on in your life. In the same way that maybe you're in, in grace, engrossed in this conversation for 10 minutes or whatever it is. Um, so you're not thinking about other things. Sometimes. Funny you say that. I talk all the time. I think that flow state. You know what flow state is? No, sir. It's the psychological state where you're entirely focused on the task at hand. Okay. So, like, if we're talking right now, and you're into the conversation, I don't know if you are. I've been talking over you a lot, but. Uh, 
you, you would be engrossed so much in what you're doing that you're not thinking about, you're not in your head thinking about a bunch of other shit. Yeah, distracted. exactly. You're distracted, essentially. Yeah, I try to keep myself in that mindset, unfortunately, just because uh, that's a little easier to manage, and I'm sure a lot of people get that. Hey, I have a question for you. Yes. Can something be anything? Yes. Uh, in, in depth. So, I mean, anything can be anything. So if there is something, you know, you can change it into anything because anything is technically everything. So do you believe that this water bottle can also be a door in a way if it's like broken down to its like you know molecular compound i bet you could restructure most of it to be a door maybe a small door but still a door interesting so if you if you broke this down all right so what what if could this be something that's alive could this water bottle be a a a, a rabbit See, I don't, I don't think so on that one. Mm, okay, so you think that we can't make so living I, I things out of things yeah, that are not currently alive? That would be correct. Yeah, I would say. I'd say that's pretty fair. Hmm. So I guess I think I that's fair too. Then I guess because uh, anything could also be alive. So I guess uh, you know something can't be anything. That, by the way, you just threw out a whole other argument here. You say that anything can be alive. I said not anything can be alive. Oh, okay. I thought you said that anything can be alive. It's true. Not no. anything can be alive. It's a privilege. Yeah, exactly. We get to do. We get to be alive. I mean, I don't know if you're alive. I don't know if you're a robot huh? or a dog. I guess, Well, dogs are alive. Dogs are definitely alive. Birds aren't. Some Birds aren't real. Some dogs are dead, this is, which this is, is fine. Not because we don't like the dogs, but because... Eternal life would be misery, and yeah. I, probably for a dog even, because imagine a hundred-year-old dog. That thing is like dust. I'm glad that the dog died before then. True. So I'm, it's, I'm glad that some dogs are dead. Now, can I ask you a question? Possibly. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to do it. So uh, what, what do you, like, why do you enjoy this like the open call because it's enjoyable for everyone else for obvious reasons so what is your reason for it what did you say your name was matt matt i appreciate you very much for calling in and i hope you have a good rest of the night you as well thank you man take care thanks bye call from mila mila hello hey what's up mila Hi. How are you? I'm good. Um, I was just thinking about the uh, topic of the night, vision. Mm -hmm. But I was sure, hearing sure. you guys talking about dreams. And I was thinking about my uh, reoccurring dream I have a lot. Tell me about this reoccurring dream. Um, well, it's more of a subject um i dream almost every night for years like even before i lived at the beach of the ocean and mostly it would be this huge like overwhelming weight just i'd be on the beach or in a house near the beach and these huge waves just crashing and you know things getting destroyed but it's not always scary. It's sometimes it's like really calm. Like sometimes I'll be inside of the waves. What do you think your take on that is? I don't know what that means. Hmm. What do you think it means? Ah, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've looked into it, and um, some like internet stuff says it's like overwhelming feeling, but. Sometimes it's not always bad, though. Sometimes I'm, like, in the water, having fun, you know, going, like, way up in the sky on the sea or going way down below. Sometimes it's scary. Sometimes it's overwhelming. So maybe it is, um, 
I don't know if it's emotions, though. I'm not a very emotional person. So these interpretations that you've been reading on the internet that it means that you are overwhelmed do you read these and you're like no that's not it I mean I'm open to it I mean I'm a I'm a very spiritual person you know I like I'm into astrology and witchy stuff like that but when it comes to the subconscious sometimes I feel like it's me in a different timeline almost like, um, I don't know if that makes sense. You in a different timeline. I've never heard of, of a subconscious being described that way. Because I've always, I've never thought of the... Because when I think of me on a different timeline, I think of a very separate, alternate version of myself. Whereas the subconscious, I think, is reflective of desires of the self that you currently are. Right. I mean, it's, I, I feel like it's always me. It's usually when I dream, it's like I'm usually in third person or first person. A lot of times it's third person, like I'm looking at me doing these things, like running away from the waves or gathering my things or gathering my friends or I'm in the ocean having fun. I don't know, but it's uh, I feel like and even when dreams are, aren't always the ocean, it's just some weird shit happening. Like, I feel like that's a glimpse into, like, just an alternate version of me. I don't know. <laughs> well, you said that you're not a very emotional person. No, not, not, yeah, not really. I don't think so. Um, so could, if I had to take a shot in the dark here, could this dream be uh, an unconscious desire to experience more lofty emotions? Ooh. Damn. You know what? Yeah, maybe. Are you Like, not allowing myself to feel things? And I'm like, possibly. yo, let's fucking feel this. Well, that's what I was going to ask you when you said not allowing, like, this emotionlessness that you're describing. Huh. Is it intentional? No, uh, yeah, actually, sometimes it really is. You know, like sometimes they want to cry, and you're just like, "Oh no, let's not." Just, just, mm -hmm. just kidding. Huh. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe this dream, it's actually an ocean of your tears that you've been oh, hiding God. away into your subconscious. <laughs> oh. And the, your subconscious is trying to tell you that if you just cried, you could play around in your tears and you'd, you you would be as happy as you are in this dream as you describe yourself playing in the huh. water you feel happy you feel free and maybe that water is your tears and if you were only to let them out you could feel free uh, swimming in them damn you know what? I think I'm going to ponder on that. I think I'm going to... I will go try to cry a little bit. <laughs> Do it. I hope you have a good cry, Mila. You too. Have a great night, guys. Take care. <laughs> Bye. She said you too. Maybe I will. Sad to get Why do you why not why do you want me to not pick up? What? No, 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 no. My dog pissed on the floor. Your dog pissed on the floor. That that's what I said, yep. Just now am I on speakerphone? No. Uh, why why are you am I uh, did you I mean I mean I assume you set the phone down to clean up the piss. 
No, I got, I got an AirPod in. I you sound very. Plugged. Can you guys hear Sam? You sound very faint. I'll, I'll, I can put you on speaker. You probably actually really hear me better. How's that? How's the mu? I, how's the music? Is the chat? Is the music too loud? I think this is more important than cleaning up piss. Well, well, I mean, look, if you need to, I mean, you can, we can talk while you pick clean up uh, piss. Nah, it's fine. It's just, I'll let it soak in. I'm used to it. You're used to it. How often yes. does your dog pee on the, pee on the floor? I can't count past five, so. What do you want? What do you, what, what do you want from me with this? I don't know. I just I was just wanted to call in. It seemed cool. Okay. Need therapy, right? I here because there's. A, I feel like I can only go so far. <laughs> it with uh, okay. You, if we go on speaker, I, I, you could therapy my dog. I think she had anxious I, I, piss on the floor. Can, you, can your dog talk? I don't think it's a Brian Griffin situation, no. Sam, listen, Sam, listen to me. I have a question for you. All right. Are you okay? That's a real philosophical question. It, it can be, depending on how, how you want to interpret it. Is that how you want me to interpret it? I don't want, I don't want anything from you. Okay. I just saw someone in chat say therapist. I'm sorry. Don't look at Sam. Sam, focus on me. Don't okay. look at chat. Don't look at the puddle of piss on your floor. Just, f li just listen to my voice. You know what? I lied. I do want something from you. I want you to answer a question for me. Okay, I'll answer. I'll answer. Can something be anything? So we're going back to philosophical. Um, uh, in essence, in theory, anything could be something, and something could be anything, but in that moment, it is not that anything. It has the potential to become anything. Well, who the fuck is this? We're talking to a new guy here. Because that was... <laughs> that that was not... That did not sound like anything else you've said through the duration that I'm, I'm talking to you. That sounded like you really thought it through. I knew it was in you. I think it's just the mental issues it signs through the anxiety you know it kind of like it lets you live multiple lives and you don't realize it until you know it gives it to you when a scenario you thought through in your head you didn't even realize you did and now you realize you're a philosopher is is this a scenario that you thought through in your head previously i might guess so it just kind of showed up do you, are, do, are you referring to the scenario of us being on the phone right now? Oh, yeah. When you played out sort of a, 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 a simulation in your head of what it might be like to be on the phone um, with me, wh how did that play out in your head, and then how did that differentiate from how it played out in reality, if you consider this reality? I didn't expect you to pick up. So that's a pretty big difference. Sure. The, the piss is leaking into the floorboards. Sam? Yeah. For your benefit. I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you clean up your dog's piss. Oh. If I were there in the room with you, I promise I would help. But I'm not. Oh that's 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 what, that's kind of you to say. Thank you for that's I really needed to hear that. As I see the Good. piss draining into the floorboards. What? You, what? How are you gonna? Are you just using paper towels, or do you have like a? You know, what, at least it's on the. At least it's on the hardwood floor. It'd be worse if it were on. The it carpet. is. But I think I might have to lift it up and clean up the plywood underneath because it's, there's a. It's it's a small dog, but the amount of piss that they release is is incomprehensible. It really looks like they took like a two liter bottle and just dumped it out in its entirety. Do you think that'll ruin the... Do you think it'll, it'll, like, grow mold or something? Probably not. Hasn't yet. Thank you for calling, Sam. I'll talk to you soon. And good luck with cleaning up your dog's piss. All right. I'll call back once I get it cleaned up. Beautiful. Sounds good. 
Hey, what location. kind of dog is it? Oh, um, the dog, um, Chihuahua Dachshund mix. I kind of have to. You're, I don't know why, but this conversation is kind of making me have to piss. You could just turn around on a stream, maybe. Go behind the chair, just squat down or something. Well, you're not crapping now, never mind. You don't need to squat. Why is this squat? Have a good night, Sam. Good night. Have a good one. Thanks. Call from Elsie. Uh, Elsie? Hello? Elsie? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Is did I did I get your name right? Is it Elsie or Chelsea? Oh, it's Kelsey with a K. Kelsey. Yes. How you doing, Kelsey? I'm great. I've been trying to get to you for like weeks now, so I'm super excited. I'm excited to talk to you too. Now you've been trying to get to me for weeks, and yeah. by the way, okay, if what I'm about to say is not the case, it's okay if this is not the case. But I'm curious. The fact that you've been trying to contact me for weeks, I assume, means, and again, okay, if, if this isn't the case, but I assume it means that there is a particular thing that maybe you wanted to talk about. Actually, not specifically. Um, my buddies are really into your show, so I started watching, and I just really wanted to talk to you because I thought you were super cool. Well, Kelsey, listen, I have a question for you. Yes. Have you ever had a vision? So, I wouldn't particularly say that it was a vision. Maybe, I don't super believe in that stuff, but I believe in more of, like, intuition. Uh, but the only one I can super think of was I was, like, pretty young, probably in, like, middle school. And I was in the car with my family. And they were all, like, talking and getting into, like, little micro arguments. And I was like, you know, I think one of them is going to leave the keys in the car before we get into the house. And they did, which was, like, super weird. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm like Raven Baxter from Not So Raven because um, she could see stuff to the future. But it never happened again. So it was cool. It never happened again. It was a one and done intuition yeah um i think there's things that like i can generally predict the outcome but that's just based on things i've noticed about other people i guess but i wouldn't call them vision uh you would say rather than uh you're be you being some sort of psychic that you are merely intuitive when it comes to other people I mean, I don't want to sound like pretentious, but I like to I don't, notice details about people so that I don't like either upset them or I can figure out ways that like to generally bring them happiness. So I think I just notice those things more. You know, that's a great skill to have because, you know, I heard this great line from someone that uh, the only thing people like more than talking about themselves is hearing about themselves. So if you're in a conversation with someone, if you ask them a lot of questions about themselves, um, you know, they'll engage with you because they like to talk about themselves. But if you're in a conversation with someone and you make statements about them like oh you seem like a very intelligent person or you seem like you have a very creative job or you seem like this you seem like that they'll get even more engaged because they like hearing about themselves they want to know why you have these intuitions so it's it's an interesting way to engage with people yeah, and I think it brings them some kind of joy that they're like being noticed by of course, of course. other people. But yeah, I don't know. I 
I like doing that. I think it um, is helpful in situations that I feel like I don't typically connect well to people initially. So I feel like that um, just kind of like listening a lot of the times is beneficial when I want to connect with someone. Why do you feel like you don't typically connect with people? I think I get really anxious. Um, I get really nervous that I'm doing the wrong things or saying the wrong things and that I'm upsetting them. So I try to avoid those situations. Mm. Why, why do you feel like you're upsetting people? That's a really good question. Um, I think, I don't, maybe that I feel like I'm upsetting them is the wrong word, but I'm afraid to upset them because I don't want to like hurt their feelings or like, you know, I don't want anyone to have a bad thought because of me. Mm. It's so weird because, um, a lot of the times I feel like when two people two people can be talking to each other and both think that they are upsetting the other person because they both have that sort of quality but you yeah. i mean from what you've told me you seem like you're very intuitive as you've said well and i tried it 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 doesn't always work, you know. It doesn't always work. Do you ever well, refrain? Do you ever, like, pick up something about someone while you're talking to them and you avoid bringing it up because you're afraid it might be, quote, the wrong thing to say? Um, could you use an example? <sighs> <laughs> Fuck I'm trying to think of one I gotta hate when people ask me questions I'm sorry Oh, roles reverse It's rough Um I don't know, man Like Like, like, alright Like, if someone's talking about their fucking If someone's like talking about their girlfriend or something would you say to them, you seem like you care a lot about this person? Yeah, I think uh, that's something positive that I could add to the conversation. And I think it would, I think the purpose of saying that would help them acknowledge that other people see their emotions or how much they care. And I think that's valuable to a lot of people. I agree. I agree. Look, you know, there's a massive shortage of people who actually listen to other people when they're talking. And um, because of that, everyone just feels sort of lonely and unheard. So uh, people who do talk to others in a way that makes them feel heard um, have the potential to make people feel really good. So I think it's good that you're doing that. I appreciate that. Also, you've got me thinking about there's an episode of That's So Raven where they get a... F okay, does anyone else fucking remember this? There's an episode of That's So Raven where they replace the food court. They replace the cafeteria with like a food court that has fast food. And everyone in the school gets fat. And I remember I saw that when I was in elementary school and being like, oh, that would be sick if my school had, like, a food court with, like, McDonald's in it and shit. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember this episode? I think I vaguely remember that episode. I think the part that's really sticking out is just Raven in, like, a fat suit. And that's all I remember. I don't know if that's even correct, but... That's well, listen, Kelsey, thank you. 
so much for calling in and um, for sharing. I hope that this three. I hope that this three week um, wait has been worth it. Well, thank you. It definitely has. Um, I'm really happy that I got through and uh, have a great night and I'll keep watching. You as well, Kelsey. Thank you so much for, for calling. You have a good night. Thank you too. Bye. Kelsey! Call from Logan. Logano. Hey. How's it going? Have we ever talked we ever talked before? We have not. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I'm actually oh, yeah. from the uh, state of uh, Alaska. Oh, really? Yeah. You're from the city of Alaska. And how are things going yeah. there? Oh, the city of Alaska is doing fine. Do you like it? It sounds. It seems sort of isolated. It is like no but... one come. Like when your favorite band is on tour, I bet they never come there. No, not, you know? not often. No, it's never the ones you want. It's always the the ones that always get scheduled in Alaska that no one likes, but everyone goes to because there's nothing else to do. What's like the big city of Alaska? Does Alaska have like a actual like a fucking you know city city an urban district? Yeah, it's there's like Anchorage, Alaska. That's where I am, which is like the closest thing you're gonna get to a city. But everywhere, you know, everywhere else is pretty shitty, really. Do, do they have like bars? Like, what do you do in Alaska? It's you'd be surprised. Anchorage is actually kind of just like a small Seattle. It's you know, it's 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 shitty because every it's there's not a whole lot to do. But you know, there's bars, there's restaurants, there's you know. Look it up sometime. It's pretty cool. Did you go to high school there? Yeah. No, I grew up here. Yeah, I was born and raised here. What's it, what's what's it like to go to high school in Alaska? Is everyone just laughing all the time? I would laugh all the time if I went to high school in Alaska. Well, I would not take anything seriously. If my teacher tried to assign me homework, I'd be like, dude, I'm going to go hang out with a SEAL. I'm not doing homework. I'm gonna, <laughs> I live in Alaska right now. I mean, so I'm not there's... taking my life seriously at all. I'm gonna just fuck around and have fun and go ice fishing. It's like it uh, it's normal high school, but except really cold and really dark all the time. Everyone's like depressed because we have like in the winter time we just don't have any sunlight. Interesting. I yeah. wonder if it's um. You ever go to your high school at night and it's cold and dark? That's kind of what I'm imagining. Like. Okay, I, I'm, this is for my folks who don't live in Alaska. Would you ever, like, go to your high school at night for, like, I don't know, whatever, prom or mm-hmm. uh, school play or something? And, like, that feeling when it's dark and kind of, you know, whatever, like, for an event? That's probably what your high school is like yeah. all the time. Pretty much, yeah. And in the summertime, we have, like, a shit ton of light, but no one's at school during the summertime. So, you know, it's kind of a... It's 22. The summertime, it's all nice and super bright, and then wintertime when everyone's in school, it's all dark and shitty. Uh, well, do you do you go to college? Or are you graduated? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I'm I'm in college right now. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I've been doing. Are, a are you at the University here, yeah. of Alaska? Yeah. What that? What is the University of Alaska like? Well, there's two different University of Alaskas. There's the University of Alaska Anchorage, which is where I'm at, and then there's the uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks, which is smack dab in the middle of Alaska, and it's like, that's, like, it's cold in Anchorage and Fairbanks. That's where it gets, like, negative 30s. Yeah, it sounds very Alaskan. Yeah. Why would they but, put stuff there? I, this I, this is my I, thing honest- with, like, Alaska and some parts of Canada is, like, you ever go to a place and you're like, why would they put stuff here? Well, I know no, Anchorage no one should be of, uh, here. Well, Anchorage was like a gold rush city. I know that. But Fairbanks, honest to God, I have no clue why people live there. There's no point. It's just cold. Would you ever consider moving um, from Alaska to the United States? If I had, uh, like, family or friends or anyone down there, like a solid, like, place to go, I would. But I, I, I don't have anywhere else to go down there. So maybe <laughs> eventually when I have the money to. 
Well, um, look, whenever you decide to come join us uh, down here, we welcome you with open arms. Awesome, yeah. I do have a vision, though. I did have a vision recently, actually. I'd oh, like sure, to talk about. Vision. Well, I have some, I, I, I have pretty weird dreams. Um, and I had one dream, to be fair, it hasn't come true yet, but I had a dream that I met, uh, actually the hit, you know, like the popular musician, uh, Billie Eilish sure. up in Alaska here. And, uh, Gosh, we I actually like never is doing a tour and I bet she will never, never do a show in never, Alaska. never be a, you never know. Actually, I'm really That's hoping the only way true. that you'll see Billie Eilish is in your dreams. Yeah, I think it, you might be onto something there. But mm -hmm. I met her and it was like really cool. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully that one comes true. Hey man, look, you know, I could see, I could see that. I could see you getting into a relationship with Billie Eilish, if only because like, you know, when the, when it's time for a star to retire, where yeah. do they want to go? Where they can just live a peaceful life and not be disturbed? They go to um, the city of Alaska. Mhm. Mm yeah, that's uh, that's what I hear. I haven't seen anyone, but you know. I'll take your word for it. Um, what'd you say your name was? It was uh, Logan. Logan, thank you so much for calling and uh um, no problem. Thank wish you. Wish you the best of luck. Now I know what the Alaska area code is. I'm excited. Yeah, man, you to... could you could come up and visit sometime, it'd be cool. You could I will. do a tour. I'll let you oh, know. Hell yeah. I'll do an Alaska okay, cool. show. Okay, cool. Yeah, we could do it uh, like a iceberg or something. Yes. I love this no, idea. Perfect. We're doing it. We're doing okay, it. Okay, cool. Sounds good. All right, I'll talk to you soon, Logan. Yeah. See ya. Call from Jared to accept. Hello? Hey, Lyle, what's up? Jeg? Hey, guys, I'll be right back. I gotta go talk to a gecko on the internet. Who is this? Hey, Jared. Have we ever talked before, Jared? No, we haven't, man. How you doing, Jared? Oh, uh, you know, dude, I'm living the dream. You're living the dream. How are you doing? Me? What's the dream? What's the dream? Ooh, you know, man, that's tough. You know, it, it varies from person to person. I'm happy with just some uh, some stability, a little bit of. Uh, I don't necessarily got to be happy all the time, but um, I'm, ta I'm talking to the gecko. Who are you with? I'm with my girlfriend. Let me talk to her. Oh God. There you go. Say hi. Say hi, Gecko. Hi, Gecko. Uh, what's your name? My name's Angie. Angie. Angie, uh, uh, Jared claims to be living his best life. He is absolutely living his best life, and I'm supporting him in it. Um, really? Like, you pay for, like, his food and stuff? <laughs> I, I don't pay for his food and stuff, but I do take him out to dinner quite often. That's nice of you. That's awesome. That's awesome. What does he do? What does he do for you in return to taking him out to dinner? Well, uh, he also takes me out to dinner, and and um, you know he he makes sure I have breakfast in the morning. I feel like if you take him out to dinner, he takes you out to dinner, and like and the equal amount of times, it's pretty much you guys just paying for your own dinners. <laughs> Quite possibly, yes. Um. So, all right, so you both pay for your own food. Um, <laughs> what else? How did you guys meet? Uh, we actually, we met online. We met on uh, plentyoffish.com. Plenty of fish. Yes. Interesting. What, plenty of fish is like the RC Cola of dating apps. <laughs> it is, but I feel like I found my Dr. Pepper. You know what? I what is <laughs> that's that's cute, I suppose. <laughs> um, what the hell was I gonna fucking say? Plenty of fish. Why did you choose plenty of fish over like a Tinder or an OK Cupid or a Match or a Harmony or any of those things? Uh, I mean, I chose it personally because a lot of my friends had been having a lot of success finding people on that website, so. I figured I'd give it a try, but uh, let's let's see let's see what Jared has to say. Sure. Why Hello. Did you choose plenty of fish. Why did I choose plenty of fish? Uh, it was it was there. That's a perfectly legitimate oh. answer, by the way. 
<clears throat> are you okay? You're having like some... One second. Are you stretching? I don't have it on. Are you having a heart attack? I haven't muted. Do you need me to call someone? I was getting up out of the chair. Oh. No, 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 I'm does, okay. Does it, does it always take you that much effort to get out of a chair? <laughs> it does. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big guy, Lyle. How, big, how, how much do you weigh? Uh, about like 300. Really? Yeah. That's cool. How tall are you? Um, uh, 5'10". Nice, nice. Um, what do you, what do you typically, what do you and your girlfriend like do all day? Uh, mostly work all day. What do you work on? Uh, I work as an accountant. You work as an accountant, you count things. I do, I count money all day. <sighs> How much money do you get paid to count money? Uh, not as much as you might think. I make about fifty-five thousand a year. It's cool to it's cool to count money, and then they're like, "Hey, after you're done counting this money, you could take some of the money." Yeah, it is pretty cool. <laughs> when you're counting the money, are you like? Do you, do you like when you're counting money? Like, let's say you count a stack of like dollar. But let's say f for every ten dollars you count, you get one dollar. Do you look at those dollars and you're like, this specific dollar is mine? No, no, it's mostly on spreadsheets. I don't actually get to see the real money. Mm. It's kind of crazy. It's all digital anyway. It just goes directly into my account. I can't do tell you the last time I had cash. Do you think your life would be cooler if, uh, or your life would be better is if you got to like see the money? I think so. Yeah. If if uh, if I got to go to work every day and it was in kind of a Scrooge McDuck style vault, maybe go swimming once a week, you know? Yeah, that'd yeah, be pretty cool. Like that. Um, going swimming. You know what the thing is? Is going swimming in. Oh, this was a Family Guy thing. I was trying to remember where I first saw this, but it's like, yeah, if you go swimming in a thing of coins, they're not they're not liquid. They're it's like you're diving onto fucking concrete. Yeah, yeah. No, it might be a little uncomfortable. Maybe don't dive into it. Just kind of lay on it and kind of shimmy your way into the coins. You know. You could probably get, but then you'd probably drown. Do you think you could drown in money? There's there's not enough space for you to breathe. You ever eaten a penny? Uh, not that I care to admit. No, they're kind of good. Well, not like not like are they? It, but like tasting it. I remember. I remember back when I put, used to put pennies and quarters in my mouth. Really? What What do they taste like? Like copper. But what, what is copper? I don't. I don't know. If I've ever eaten copper. I don't know if I could describe the taste of copper. You would have to put a penny in your mouth to find out. All right. You know. You know what? When I get off the phone here, I'm going to go find a penny and put it in my mouth just for you. Can you do it while you're still on the phone with me? Let, let me see. Do we have a penny laying around somewhere? Yeah, I need ask to eat your one wife, to if, Ask your Probably girlfriend your if she has a penny that you can put in your mouth. Uh, I don't think we have one up in the apartment, unfortunately. Do you have a uh, maybe down in the car. Do we have a, do we have a quarter? No, I mean, we don't really carry cash on No, we don't have any coins up here. What do you have? What else do you have around the house? I got like, like an Xbox controller, uh, some probably stale cookies. Uh, Would you be willing to put that in your mouth? Just like suck on the Xbox engine? controller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on one second. Just... Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You, you know, it doesn't really taste like much of anything, if I'm honest. Hold on. What does it taste like? Uh, you know, you ever uh, you ever um, kind of gone a, a little bit without washing your hands? And you, you go to eat something and tastes a little a little dirty. Yeah, yeah, it tastes something like that. Wait, what kind of Xbox is it? Uh, Xbox One. Okay, all right. I have the Xbox. Uh, can you can you taste the A button? Yeah, yeah. Let me let me grab it again. All right. If if you folks at home want to follow along. Okay, okay, I've licked the A button. 
Okay, I'm gonna lick mine. Okay. You all right? Try. Let's lick the Y button. Okay. Did, did you taste the difference oh, between the A button and the Y button? Yeah, yeah. You know, the the A button actually tastes a little more green. Which edge did you? Which edge of the controller did you put in your mouth? Did you put the right one or the left one? It was. Oh gosh, it was the left. Um, kind of the the bottom left bit. Let's do an analog. Yeah, stick. there you go. I'm gonna let's. Okay. I'm, gonna do the, I'm gonna do the left analog stick. I, I'll, I'll get the right one. Okay. Uh, you know that's that's got an interesting texture to it. It does. All right, now I'll do the right one. I'm gonna do the right one. Okay, we'll we'll switch it up here. Uh, I like the right one a little bit better than the left one. To be honest, you know, I I agree. I think it's a little less worn down. This is a lot better than playing video games. I know that we're on a website where everyone plays video games, but I think this is a better thing to do. It's you know, it's it's novel, games. it's unique, and I appreciate that. Maybe not all the time, you know, but stir things up a little bit. The triggers taste weird on this thing. What'd you say your name was? Uh, Jared. Thank you for calling, Jared. Uh, thank you for taking my call. You have yourself a wonderful night, Mr. Gecko. You as well, Jared. Take care. Bye-bye. Call from... Charlie. Hello? Hey, is this the Gecko? This is the Gecko. Hey, Mr. Gecko. I think I'm like the real first person that actually has problems. I honestly do. You're the first person that actually has problems. Well, um, I listen, I, I don't mean that disrespectful because everyone that called in today, they actually, you know what, I take that back. But I'm in pain, Mr. Gecko. You're in pain. Well, let me, I wanted to say a few things up front first, sure. if I can. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. The express purpose of this stream is less so t uh, to help solve people's problems and more so, t uh, t I, I don't know, I can't finish that sentence. But um, I'm not qualified to do anything. I hope you are aware of that. Oh, absolutely. And listen, I, I, I think your stream is great. And I, I've had a couple of drinks and I'm actually beside my loved one right now. And we had some problems. We thought we'd call you and you can help figure it out. Okay, and these are what? these are relationship problems. Yes, that's right. Yep. Please, I'd love to. Please, go ahead. Okay, how about, uh, I'm going to say, Elizabeth, can you chime in as well? What do you think our real problem is here? Yes, let's hear it from uh, her. I, I don't know. I don't know if we have a problem. We've been living in his parents' basement for two years, saving up hmm. for a house. And um, I think it's just living here with the five grandkids uh, and his parents it can be kind of suffocating. And I think she should be uh, grateful. What do you think? So I, I look, uh, how old are you guys? Uh, we're old enough. We'll say that. I'm 29. Are, you're 20. I always think, look, so, so, uh, personally, I think living with your parents in their basement, whatever, to save some money, you know, living kind of annoyingly for a few years so that you can live well later on. I, I always think it's a, it's a good decision um, if you can hack it. That's, that's, that's true. I just um, I, I, I don't like going in the kitchen, so I just eat a lot of canned beans and I can't order mm -hmm. Uber Eats because I'm ashamed to. And it just um, it makes me nervous. Are you avoiding the kitchen because you or don't want to run into any of the grandkids? Yes, exactly. Because um, they eat Nutella every day for breakfast, okay. and I he gets mad. He thinks I'm food shaming them. I'm not. It's food so shaming. It's hard. He's food shaming the children. I'm I'm confused as to why you're afraid to be around the children because they eat Nutella. Well, 
it's just they get really really hyper after like they That's run true. around and they scare our cats because they stomp we're in the basement and there's no soundproofing and they're stomping and the cats freak out and one of my cats got oh, hold on hold on for, 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 forget about the cats for just a second why do they scare you oh they scare me because i'm just not used to kids really i think she's actually afraid this is what our kids are gonna be like i'm sorry i had sorry elizabeth Okay. Are you are you guys uh, planning to have kids? Yeah, I want to. This is a see, this is like a serious problem, but yeah, I want to. She's a maybe. Because she sounds like she doesn't like kids, which, by the way, this is completely understandable. Kids are terrible. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I agree. Yeah, other kids are terrible, but my own, I don't know. We'll see. I, I I agree with that sentiment, but I okay, I, I, Elizabeth. I still don't understand why you don't want to go into the kitchen because of all these kids. Well, you can just ignore them, by the way. If they want to, if they want to call you, you um, aunt or I don't I don't know what your they call relationship me auntie is Elizabeth. The, they call to aunt you. Then when they say auntie Elizabeth, auntie Elizabeth, just ignore them. They you owe them nothing, really. Yeah, but I don't want to ignore them and give them a complex either, you know? Like, they're kids, I get it, but, like, if I haven't had my coffee yet and they want it play Ring Around the Rosie, I just, right. it makes me feel exhausted before I've even started my day. Look, you can't set yourself on fire just to make a bunch of kids happy, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, you, you got. I, 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 I feel like you should assert more dominance over the kitchen instead of letting these kids make it into the, the Lord of the Flies. Oh, I like that. What's a practical, one practical tip I can do to do that? Because I even bought a coffee maker, so I would be downstairs, and I feel like they won that battle. So what's something I could, how do I assert dominance in the kitchen? Uh... Well, don't hit any of them. <laughs> no. Oh, I could replace the Nutella with, like, something healthy. No, I don't know. No, no, no. <sighs> this is not a Nutella thing. This I'm is... telling you just to keep ignoring them. That's what you ignore. should do. You're, yeah, here's your assertion. Here's your assertion of dominance. This is just ignore them. There's five though, and it's a 400 foot square, 400 square foot. I guess I could. Okay, just just act like like. This is what mindfulness is about. This is what mindfulness is about. Is how can you be centered, even if there's five fucking kids? Because that's the thing. If you can, if you can find the the. the mental juice though to make your freaking coffee as stoically as possible where five kids are whipping you with a jumping rope you can do anything elizabeth oh, uh, take it as a uh, challenge gecko i i'm right. gonna think of you tomorrow morning beautiful okay. thank you guys so much for for uh, for, uh for calling in um I, I wish you the best of luck enjoy the house that you will inevitably uh uh, uh receive as a reward for your troubles Oh, or, I don't know, maybe you. you'll die before then. The li life is crazy. But I hope you don't. <laughs> Thanks, Gecko. You're the best. You have a good night, guys. Yeah. All right, take care. Call from... Vincent Perez. To accept. Vincent, man. You there? Hey, yeah. Is this a Gecko? Yeah, how you doing, Vincent? I'm good. I'm, I'm at a Chick-fil-A right now, waiting for food. You're at a Chick Fil A right now. Yeah. Um. What did you order? Uh, it's a spicy sandwich. Really? I n I never usually get the spicy. I usually get the regular. No, I like the I like the spicy. Um. So you're in public right now. Yeah, there's, I'm like amongst a lot of people right now. It's so interesting to me because when I am in public, I hate talking on the phone. I feel very, very self-conscious. I don't have that part of me that can just interrupt a public setting with my thing. Well, it is like I'm in Miami, Florida right now, so really nobody cares. Well, how do you know? Well, how do you know nobody cares? I mean, ultimately, by the way, nobody really does care because I, when I'm in a situation where someone else is on the phone talking loudly in public, I, I really, I look at them with uh, envy more than anything, really. 
Like, well, I'm sure I wish people I had the gall yeah. to do that. I mean, I'm sure if people knew that I was talking to you, they'd probably look at me with envy. Yeah. Well, no, not envy because you're talking to me. I mean, envy that you have the confidence to not be afraid of people judging you for being on the phone in public. Yeah. I'm not afraid of people's judgment. Really? Yeah. In any sense? Um, unless, like, it, it's, like, physically going to hurt me, you know? You know, that's a strong skill to have. There's a lot that you can do with that. That's actually, I, I would say, one of the number one skills uh, uh, to have. So, do you, do you remember your dreams? Do I remember my dreams? Yeah. What did you say your name was? Vincent. Vincent, I have a question for you. Have you ever had a vision? Yeah, yeah, because uh, like last night I had a dream and I was able to remember it. Usually that doesn't happen for me. It's usually really dream? rare. A uh, dream was like I was in a jewelry shop, like a jewelry store. Um, and a, a specific one that like I have only heard about but never been to. But I was able to like, I guess my mind was able to like recreate it. Sure. Um, and so I was in this space that I'd never been in but in the dream um got it and I'm pretty sure I was stoned in the dream but I haven't smoked weed in like a week so, so um but in the dream I was for sure high because I uh, I bought this like gold ring and I thought it was really cool at first I thought like it had this like cool Native American art on it um but then turns out it had like Dora the Explorer on it and uh so I tried to like go and return it or get an exchange and there was this like whole ordeal and that's around when I woke up from that dream. You tried to return it because it had Dora the Explorer on it. Yeah, it, it just totally lost all its coolness from before. Do you have an active problem with Dora the Explorer? I just don't think it, it looks cool on like gold or something expensive. Hmm. But maybe, maybe somebody else would, would think it's cool. Right, I mean, you could have at least, you know, done a little bit of arbitrage. You could have resold it. Yeah. That's true. So, so do you remember your dreams at all? Is that a struggle for you? I try to forget as much as possible so that I can make room for what I'm doing in the present. For sure. Hey, thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, thanks for picking up. Of course, you have a good night, Vincent. You too. Of course, you think there's nothing wrong with Dora the Explorer, you know? I mean, look, if he liked the ring, who cares about, you know, the TV show that was on it? Call from... Wyatt Cleveland. Wyatt. Hello? Hey, what's up, Wyatt? Wyatt. Hey, buddy. How hey, you doing today, man. Gek? You know, man, I'm actually doing pretty good. I'm, I'm feeling really chill. I, um... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, like, stay more in my own zone. Um, the best I can. You know? Why is that? Well, because uh, it, you know, far too often, my, you know, far too often, I think all of us uh, find ourselves susceptible to the pressures of society, the pressures from others to do a certain thing, to be a certain way, pressures from this, pressures from that. And the best way to relieve those is to just stay in your own zone, you know, yeah. mentally at yeah. least, if you can. What are you up to, Hell yeah. Wyatt? Um, not too much. I uh, turned on your stream right when it popped up, so uh, pretty excited about that. I'm a first-time caller. Just uh, my buddy... Uh, he said, hey, you ever see that gecko guy on YouTube? I was like, no. 
he showed me, I was hooked instantly. I, I've been watching for about three days now. So first time caller, hey, first time yeah. calling in. Hey, uh, Gary, nice to talk to you, Wyatt. Wyatt, nice I, to man, to I, got a, I got a question for you here. What's that? You, you ever had a vision? Yeah, yeah. I have, yeah. I've had a Tell few visions, that. you know. Um, you know, ever since, ever since I was about probably four years old, I've uh, always wanted to be a U.S. Marine. That had been like my lifelong goal, my lifelong mm -hmm. vision, I guess you could mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was in a military program. I grew up a lot on military bases when I was a kid. My father was a Marine. Um, and then, you know what? That vision kind of fell apart. It, it shattered by the time I uh, turned 18, by the time it was, it came around to actually uh, enlist into the military or go to college to become an officer, you know? That vision really mm -hmm. fell apart. And why did that vision fall apart? Um, to be honest, it was because of a girl. I started dating a girl when I was 16 and uh, ended that relationship when I was 18. And uh, she told me, she said, I could never really be with someone who wanted to do with, do that uh, with their lives. And uh, I respected that, and I had genuine love for her. So I uh, really didn't go into the Marines because of a girl, long story short. Really? And mm -hmm. why was it that she couldn't have respect for that? Um, I don't know if it's she couldn't have respect for it. It's more she wasn't looking for that in a partner. And you know what, Jack? I am so grateful that I made that decision not to go into the military. And I'm mm -hmm. very, very grateful that my vision of almost probably 14 years fell apart. And it's it's made me the man I am today. And I'm really thankful for that. <clears throat> yeah, that's cool to hear, man. I, you know, when a dream gets shattered, it can actually be a good thing in many situations because it opens you up. It stops. It, it clears away the tunnel vision so that you can see what else there is out there, especially, goddamn, when you're 18 years old, you know? I know. It's ba you're basically a child at that age, man. Absolutely. And I'm 20 now, so. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I realize that. I know that. And, so. Uh, yeah. You say that you are very thankful that this vision fell apart. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. are you so thankful? I want to hear it from you. What has this mm. vision falling apart? Well, I think it really you? showed. I think it really showed me um, what the correct, not the correct, but what the most fulfilling, I should say, the most fulfilling. Uh, timeline for myself and my life and goals to follow it was kind of mm. like a natural process i guess you could say um mm. but yeah natural process really happy about it so what's next for you what are you gonna do now that you are not chasing the military life oh man i think for me um i want to live as the native americans live uh, thousands, hundreds, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years ago. I want to be one with the land. I want to live with, live with my tribe. And I want to be just one of the other critters in the forest. That's like my life goal. And Don't I, end up like that Christopher McCandless guy. Who ate oh, yeah, yeah. Into the Wild. Yep. Yeah. Don't that was one of my favorite movies growing up. <clears throat> so... So yeah, I mean, you want to live off the land, you want to be a critter running around the earth. Correct. That is for me. And... Just like you, Gek. <laughs> oh, I'm totally not that. I am in an air-conditioned place. I ate uh, chicken tenders uh, that were processed that I bought from a grocery store and used a microwave to heat up. That's not what I am. Uh, at all. Interesting. Yeah, because I, I saw another one of your streams and you were out in the forest. It seemed like you were just one of those forest dwellers, you know? So you... What's your plan here? Where I mean, I, I assume you're not calling me from... I assume you have not taken action on this plan yet just by nature no. of the fact that you are connected to the internet enough to call me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the, the question of the night was, have you had a vision? 
I have, have had a vision, but now I am having a vision and uh, trying to navigate myself through that, trying to navigate uh, through, I guess you could say, just life and reaching my ultimate goal. So what's your next step? How do you... How do you prepare for this life of living off the land that you're attempting to live? Well, I'm not I'm not really sure about that, to be honest. Um, I put some deep thought into it, and for for me, I've kind of realized that I'm going to have to find somebody who has been doing it or has done it, uh, yes. and try to have a like an apprenticeship type of deal yeah. going on. I'm not really sure how to go about that, but I feel like. Uh, I don't feel I know that my stars will align, so I don't know. I have no idea. You could get mentored by some wolves. I could. Have you ever heard about that? Like kids being abandoned and then raised by wolves and shit? You ever hear about that? I have heard about that. I feel like you're a little late in the game, though. I feel like you have too many (laughs) ties to human civilization to be raised by wolves. But if you were to approach the wolves with some sort of peace offering... Hmm. Maybe a big jute, maybe a you know a small dog or a piece of steak, something that can get them to know that you're cool. They hmm. might be willing to let you in, but I'd be careful about that. I don't know. Maybe find but, some survivalist guy on Instagram before you do that. <laughs> maybe you know. I, I think that's a really good idea, Jack. I think yeah. I might I might try that out. <clears throat> I have to find the wolves first. Oh, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Listen, Wyatt, uh, good luck to you. Thank you. Again, don't die. Don't end up like the the guy who died next to the bus eating the berry. Don't die. I'll try, man. Be safe about it. Live your life. Do your thing. You only live once. Live the way that you want to, but don't die, Wyatt. Sounds good. Good advice, Dick. Thank you so much for calling, man. You have a great rest of yeah. the night. I believe in you, dude. Yeah, thank you. Hey, love you, Gek. Love you too, baby. Take care. Bye-bye.